this is the engine that came with the car of my boss like 10 years ago when he got the car but uh, when he restored it uh, he had another engine and he put it in the car but uh, this engine was sitting just uh, in pieces let's say for seven or eight years and then two three years ago my boss asked somebody to put it together for him just so he has a spare engine uh, he never finished now I'm planning to rebuild it so I decided to strip it because somebody else started so I didn't know what was uh, done on it I put all the parts here I'm gonna measure now and we'll go from there so I self-educated a little bit in YouTube I found a lot of information in bits and pieces in different videos but uh, I decided to put together one video which explains how to measure and how to calculate what bearings do you need to order for your uh, engine when you rebuild it. So I printed all the uh, specifications for this engine here. So I'll start with the main bearings. So this is the crankshaft. It looks okay, but now we will see the measurements. So the main journal of the diameter must be 2.47900 uh, of an inch. So I'll measure in three positions to make sure it's uh, not out of round. My first journal is 2.4492. Now let's see the second one. So the second journal is exactly the same. All the three journals are smaller than the spec but they are all even in size and they are not out of round which uh, probably means that they have been machined already. The crank pin diameter two point zero twenty five fifty fifty five fifty six and four. And the same applies for the crank pins. And this is my piston and liner number one. So what I need to know here, I need the bore of the big end. These are brand new bearings that somebody put there. Oh wow, these are 030. So maybe they are the right ones. Let's see. For more accurate measurements, these need to be torqued. But I think I'm, I'm not gonna go that far. Again, board needs to be between 2.2327 and 2.2335. So I'm gonna set up my dial gauge at 2.2327 which is here, here. So that's 2.1, 2, 7, 7, correct. So that's the measurement that I'm looking for. Okay, so my dowelboard gauge is set to 2.2327 2327 ten thousandths of an inch and now the dial gauge is showing me how much bigger is the actual size than the set size that I set it to I don't know if it, that's 5, 10, 15, 20 and it's a good thing I'm not out of round dial gauge is set to uh, 2.2 23, 27, plus 0 0.0020.
So that's my measurement. That's the bore of my first connecting rod. 2.2347. So for the connecting rods, I'm gonna measure the rest of them later. So the cylinder diameter, the standard size is 3.3861. I already know that uh, cylinders are not in a good shape because I can feel a ridge with my nail at the top, so they probably will need to be rebored, but maybe we're gonna buy new ones. But I decided to measure them just in case. And now with the Dalbor gauge set to 3.3861, I'm gonna measure the bore of the cylinder and cap of spots. I will measure top, center and bottom. So top, center and bottom and I'm gonna measure in one, two, three positions so I can uh, figure out if it's uh, out of round or if it's tapered. So what did I do here? These are my uh, top, center and bottom and these are my positions, first, second and third position, what I measured. So, at the top I measured this in the three, three different positions and the, the difference between the smallest one, which is this one, and the biggest one is 0 0.0006 10 thousandths of an inch. So, I wrote that here, 6. I did the same here, the difference between 3 10 thousandths of an inch and 6 10 thousandths of an inch is 3 10 thousandths of an inch and the same here the difference between 1 and 4 is 3 10 thousandths of an inch so my out of uh, round is the biggest one of these three which is 6 so my out of round is 6 10 thousandths of an inch and then for the taper I checked in the same position let's say first position I measured uh, between 30 and 2 10 thousandths of an inch so the difference between 2 and 30 is 28 thousandths of an inch. The same thing for the second position. I measured between 1 10 thousandths of an inch and 24 10 thousandths of an inch. So the difference between these two is 23 10 thousandths of an inch and here I have again 23 10 thousandths of an inch. So the biggest one of these, which is this one, is my taper. So my taper is 0 0.0028 10 thousandths of an inch. And the last thing is uh, the biggest measurement I found here is 30 10 thousandths of an inch which is 30 10 thousandths of an inch more than what my dial gauge was set up to which was this number. So I added this number to this number and I got 3.3891 10 thousandths of an inch. That's my biggest size that I found on this cylinder. And now one more thing I need to do here and that's uh, I have to take those bearings out and measure the diameter of the housing for the bearing for the main journal. These are 30 already. Okay, so now my dial bore gauge is set to 2.6250 10 thousandths of an inch and now I'm gonna measure the housing. Okay, with this information I come to the computer and I'll do very simple uh, Excel calculator here. So let's say for the main bearings from the specifications I'm gonna grab some information. So first of all I need the main bearing 
housing diameter, which is here between 2.6250 and 2.6255. Now I need the journal diameter, the main journal diameter between 2.4790 and 2.4795. Our diameter is going to be smaller because of the wear, of course. Main bearing wall thickness is 0.0720, and I'm going to put that times two because we have two bearings on top and on the bottom of the journal diameter main bearing clearance must be between 0 0.0015 and 0 0.0025 and the wear limit is up to 31 wear is up to 0 0.0031 so how does this work? when we have the journal in the housing and between the journal and the housing diameter we have two bearings we need to have clearance between this and this with the wear the journal diameter becomes smaller and then our clearance becomes bigger of course uh, that's why when we buy new bearings we might need to buy oversized ones which which is available in 0 0.010, 0 0.020, or 0 0.030. So let's try it with the standard sizes, with 2.6250. Journal diameter, which is 2.4790. The bearing size times 2 is 0 0.144. Oversize for now, we're going to keep it 0. And let's see how much is our clearance here. From the housing diameter, we have to subtract the journal diameter. We also have the bearing uh, thickness. And we also have to subtract the oversize if we have any. For now, we don't have anything, it's zero, but I'm going to keep it here in the formula. So, as it is, the clearance is 0 0.0020, ten thousandths of an inch. Okay, so the calculator works. So, let's say this is our uh, journal two, 1, and this is our journal 2, and journal 3. Uh, let me make it a little bit uh, more presentable. Okay. We have to copy the formula from here all over the place. Just uh, fill without formatting. I just want to make sure that the format of these cells is uh, number with four decimals okay so now for journal one I'm gonna start putting the numbers that I measured on the crankshaft so the first journal the housing was 2.6260 the journal diameter was 2.4492 the bearing size is gonna be 0.1440 and in this case we're going to have a huge clearance because as you can see our journal diameter is much smaller than it is uh, coming out of the factory so i guess we have to put oversized bearings and let's see how big oversized bearings we need if we put 0 0.010 our clearance will be still too big so let's try with 0.0 20. Oh, it becomes smaller, but still way too big. Let's put 0 0.030. In this case, we have 28 ten thousandths of an inch clearance, which is a little bit bigger clearance than the manufacturing. But if you see here, the wear limit is 0 0.0031. So we are still below the wearing 
uh, limit. If we want to use this uh, crankshaft and we don't want to buy a new one, we still can do it with oversized bearings and the oversize needs to be 0 0.030. So that's the whole idea. I'm gonna make this one red. Okay, let's do it for the second one. 2.6 and uh, I guess we need to put the same uh, oversized bearing actually here so 0 0.030 and we have exactly the same gap because our housing is a little bit smaller but uh, our journal diameter is a little bit smaller too so we have again the same clearance here 0 0.0028 which we said is still under the wearing limit. And for journal number 3 we're going to do the same thing. The size of the housing is 2.62. The journal diameter is 0.4491. The main size is the same 0.142. And of course we're going to put the same size. 0.3. And we are again, we are still below the wear size. So we can say that the bearings that somebody stole already are the correct bearings for the journals. Now I have to do the same for the uh, connecting road bearings. So I'm gonna just copy this. And I'm paste it here. So this is for the connecting road bearings. Uh, and we have uh, road one, two, four. Road board Now the clearance we need to adjust twenty eight ten thousandths of an inch and forty ten thousandths of an inch. The wear limit is fifty ten thousandths of an inch. So we have a little bit more of a play. Okay, so let's put our information here on uh, road number one, 2.2347. The crank pin on number one was 2.0564. The bearing size, of course, is 0 0.1440. We need a much smaller clearance here, so we need, let's say, 0 0.10 still too big, so 0 0.020, still too big, 0 0.030, that's our clearance, I think, because we are somewhere here, but not still in the wear limit. And since we have 0 0.030 there in the engine, I think these are fine, we're gonna keep them. So just let me check the other three roads. So the pink was 2.2 months, I'm going to here. Here we go, nothing. And the pink is 2.30, and we are in the zero zero. So we'll come back the last one. The board was 2.2344. The front diameter was 2.0. And the bearing should be 0 0.0030. Now we're going to have a look at the bearings. an inch, which is totally fine. So we figured out that the bearings, the main bearings and the connecting rod bearings that I have are correct for these engines and I can keep them but uh, generally that's the idea how you measure and how you calculate your bearings and if you need uh, any machining or not.